Hello traders and investors, welcome back to the Trend Trader channel. It's been a while since we made a video, but today we have a, a video. We are going to be doing some stock analysis as we have always done. But before uh, we do anything, I just want to thank everyone that has subscribed uh, to the YouTube channel. We are currently just above uh, 1000 subscribers. So if you are one of the subscribers, thank you very much. We wouldn't have done this uh, without your support. So I appreciate each and every person that has subscribed uh, to the YouTube channel. If you are one of our viewers who haven't subscribed uh, to the channel, I would like to ask you to consider uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel. This will help uh, the channel uh, grow and to reach uh, higher levels. Once again, I thank you all uh, for subscribing. It really means uh, a lot to us. It shows that uh, the work that we do for the our for our viewers and subscribers, it means that it is uh, appreciated, and we'll continue to make uh, more uh, stock analysis uh, videos. We hope that you will enjoy those. So for today, I'll just be looking at uh, four companies. As we know, uh, as a country, in the past uh, two weeks or so. We saw that uh, there was a bit of uh, protest in some part of the country. The protest mainly happened in the in KwaZulu Natal and some parts uh, of Gauteng. Some other provinces, it didn't happen that much. Although there were some people who did uh, try to protest in other parts of the country, but the two main affected provinces is KwaZulu Natal, my home province, and Gauteng, where I'm currently based uh, at the moment. We saw there was some bit of uh, violence happening there. There was a bit of looting in some shops. So some people might be worried about the effect of that uh, incident. So this is why today I want to cover companies such as uh, ShopRite, uh, Messmart, uh, Redefine, and also to look at this deal. The reason why I'm choosing these companies is because we know that ShopRite is found in many uh, shopping complexes so all the shopping complexes that were affected they may or may not have a uh, shop right in them and then also mesmat we saw what happened in Devon where they went to that um, ma uh, macro store there so macro is part of mesmat uh, i don't know ma how many other mesmat or macro stores that were affected but i know the one that is in Devon uh, near westville is the one that was uh, mostly affected and then we saw one of the distilled plant in New Germany uh, bent. I, I don't know to what extent, but there were some buildings that were on fire. They on distilled. Also, we know that uh, for the last three weeks or so, we had the alcohol ban in South Africa. At least some parts uh, of alcohol couldn't be sold, but you could buy. Some people you could buy and consume at your house, or you can buy alcohol in a restaurant for sit-in and stuff but overall we're just gonna stick to that there was an alcohol pen so we want to see how that has affected the share price of this deal and then also the last company that i want to look at is redefine as we know that um, in Houghton, maponya mall was one of the mall that was uh, severely affected by the protest so now we want to look at the company that owns uh, maponya mall which is redefined so we want to look the what can we expect from the share price? Just keep in mind, as I mentioned, it was only two provinces that were severely affected. So some other stores are still uh, operating without uh, any challenges. Yeah, so what happened in those two provinces does not necessarily affect the country as a whole. For instance, as I said, I'm based in Gauteng. When I visited uh, the macro that is closer to my place, everything was uh, normal in fact they had overstocked uh, some product so in terms of logistics it shows that uh, the companies not to say that they were prepared for the protest the companies can continue to do business despite uh, the protest that are happening in the country and uh, one thing that i would like to say condolences to the families that lost their family members uh, due to the Phoenix massacre. We know that the government is quiet on that, but I can't be quiet on that because there are people that are affected by that. 
So we, we demand uh, justice for the families that lost uh, their family members in the Phoenix massacre. And the people, the perpetrators of that, they need to be arrested, they need to be dealt with. We can't sit and be quiet uh, when we see something like that happening. We cannot allow the government or any leadership structures just sweeping that issue under the carpet. So we demand justice for that. I really can't keep quiet on that. Yeah, so condolences to those families that lost their family members. And I hope that the perpetrators will be dealt with by the law. So let's go to the stock market analysis. Okay, we are going to start uh, with this tell. We're just going to go uh, with the alphabetical order. So for those who don't know yet, uh, Distel is an alcohol uh, producing company. They have uh, a lot of companies in their banner. I won't count them all because I don't want to be wrong, but uh, just know that it's an alcohol company. So if you think that uh, factors such as alcohol ban might affect uh, Distel, that thinking is sort of warranted. I mean, if the business, nothing is happening there, you would expect that the, the result or the financial result of that company will be affected. But in terms of a technical analysis, we see a completely different story. As you know, in this channel, we only do a technical analysis. Although in the past, we did, uh, we did touch a bit uh, on fundamental analysis, especially on uh, the Aven video that we did uh, previously. If you haven't seen that uh, Aven video, just make sure that you click uh, there on the pop-up banner so that you see it's almost a one hour video. We just uh, talking about Aven, why Aven is maybe worth the sense or why it's not worth the sense. So back to this deal. Uh, I have a position on this deal. I'm planning to hold on this deal. And uh, the alcohol ban or the incident that are related to the protest, they didn't affect uh, this deal at all. As I always say on my Twitter account, it's technicals first. I don't make uh, any decision unless, I mean, I don't make decisions based on fundamental analysis. I only make buy and sell decisions based on technical analysis. So it's the same case uh, with uh, this deal. Let me try to get something to annotate. So for those that uh, been following this channel for a while now, we spoke about that we are buying this deal at this level that was in November 2020 when the share price uh, broke above uh, this level. So we've been holding this stock uh, ever since that uh, since November 2020. From there, we saw the stock uh, trade from around about 85 rand per share all the way to about 100 rand uh, per share. Then started uh, to retrace back to the 200 day moving average, and then we I added more there, as you see, that uh, bounce was supported by a, a large position, I mean, a large volume of buyers, meaning that the people that were pushing the stock there. So the stock went high, breaking above this uh, 100 rand position once again, and then started to go on sideways uh, a bit. Uh, if you are on Twitter, just search for the village trader. So there's a gentleman there, village trader. He likes to talk about the, the boxes there. He's one of the best uh, technical analyst, analysts that you can follow on Twitter. And I think if you search uh, YouTube, uh, the village trader, you will see um, his YouTube channel there. Just make sure that you check it. He also does a lot of uh, stock analysis. So we drew this box because we wanted to see if the price was going to come back to this level or if it was going to break above uh, this level. So the price uh, of this deal moved uh, sideways for quite some time, up until some time in May, where we saw that it broke above uh, this box. So around May, we took another trade position here, because now, as we mentioned again, we like to see uh, the breakout supported by large volume. So it's the same thing that happened here. So when the price uh, broke above this box, it happened on a large volume we added them to that position as well. As you can see, the share price is going up. The 200-day moving average is also going up. The 50-day moving average is still supporting the price uh, nicely. We saw that uh, there was a large ramp there. 
everything happened uh, so quick, but it was everything that was happening was supported by large volume. So we were confident on the upward move. We kept uh, the stock there. And then recently the stock started uh, to consolidate uh, sideways. So as you can see now it's trading uh, sideways. But you see here, the stock hasn't broke below the 50 day moving average. So we still have uh, a position there. So I will just uh, clear everything here and then um, zoom in a bit so that you can see what happened. So as we said that the protest happened uh, somewhere around about two weeks from now. So that's about 14 days. So we can just say it's around this period. Uh, let's just say at the end of June, beginning of July, that is when the protests started to happen. As you can see, the price is just uh, consolidating there nicely, no panic uh, in this here. So if this uh, digital group was affected by the protest and by the banning of that plant in New Germany in Pine Town, we would expect that the share price will drop lower on the large volume. Fortunately, it didn't happen. So the stock is still holding there. We're still holding our position. We are not panicking. For now, what we're expecting to see, I would like to see the stock uh, break above this uh, level, about 172 rand per share, and then to continue to trade high. So in the case of this deal, the protest, they had no effect at all. We still have a position on this deal. Uh, we don't know what the president will say today regarding uh, the lockdown regulations and alcohol sales and stuff, but we're not using uh, any kind of fundamental analysis. Whatever the president says, we are bullish on the stock. We have a position. We expect the price to continue to trade higher as it has been doing. Okay. So now the second stock is uh, Nesmat. This one is one of our uh, biggest winner that we held since last year. So around September, the stock uh, broke above this level. So we took a, a first position there. That position it just retraced a bit. And then after quite some time, the stock uh, came back above this level. So we've been holding uh, Nesmat again since November um, 2020. If you go back uh, to some of the videos, uh, you can just go there and see what you said about Nesmat uh, before we buy Nesmat. In terms of fundamental analysis, Nesmat is still not um, profitable um, because there was a turnaround uh, strategy that was taken by the management and the board. So in terms of dividends, they, they are not paying dividend uh, yet. In the last uh, uh, financial reporting, they didn't declare dividend, but we want to get money from share price appreciation. And if there's money that is coming from dividend, it's also good. We're not going to stop uh, buying a company just because it's not paying dividend. Yes, we like dividend, but what we want is capital appreciation more than the dividend. So as you see, they have just uh, reported earnings. You can see there's this E there, but what is missing is the D because the D is for dividend. So now back to the analysis, we bought a uh, Nesmat there. We held the stock. It went up uh, nicely. As you can see, it had this uh, 50 day moving average as a dynamic support. But unfortunately for Nesmat, when they started reporting the looting that was happening in Springfield there in Deben, the share price broke below the 50 day moving average. Then I exited uh, my position around this level. So basically I held um, Nesmat from this entry here from about uh, 36 rand per share all the way up to uh, 55 rand per share. So I currently do not have a position in Nesmat, but I'm still waiting for an entry that will give me a reasonable risk uh, to reward uh, for me to enter this. So let's see how the stock, uh, what I want to see for, uh, from the stock before I buy it. Basically the stock is still uh, below the 200 day moving average and also it's below, so this is the 200 day moving average. It's also below the 50 day moving average. So what I want to see, uh, we saw that as it came down, it hasn't touched uh, this level. So I'm expecting one of two things, a couple of scenarios. One scenario is that the share price would come back to touch this level. If it touch this level and then it goes above this level, which means that the candle will be green, then I will take a position and set my stop loss, just a multiple ATR 
below that uh, candle. That is scenario number one. So if that happens, then I just want to see the lower price rejection. Then I will check the trade. And then I will target uh, this previous uh, swing high of about 72. So that is uh, scenario number one that I want to see uh, on this day, I mean on Nesmat. And then the scenario, the second scenario that I'll wait for, if the price does not go to retest the 200 day moving average, I want to see the price come back and close above this uh, 50 day moving average. Immediately, once it close above that level, then I will place uh, my buy order and then set my stop level a uh, multiple ATR below the that entry level. Again, for a short term uh, trade, I want to see the price go back to test this uh, swing high there. And then uh, hopefully it will continue to trade high. So those are one of two uh, possibilities that I want to see. Whichever comes first, I will play it as uh, I have mentioned. So basically, uh, as a trader, you just have to sit uh, on your hands and wait for the market to do whatever that you are anticipating. I'm not going to predict that uh, Nesmat is going to survive and continue to go up or predict that Nesmat is going to struggle because of the protest and then it's going to go down. No, I just uh, come up with a couple of scenari scenarios in my head that if this happens, this is how I'm going to react. And if that happens, that is how I'm going to react. So. That is how I, I approach the market. In terms of whether the company is a good company or bad company based on fundamental analysis, I have no opinion uh, on that. But the previous trade that I took, it really uh, paid as well. That was a 11 R trade. So basically, like I said before, the R concept, um, this uh, R concept is based on the risk to reward. So basically, you want to determine how much you are willing to lose versus how much you, uh, you made. So one R uh, minus one R is basically one unit of risk. So if we bought the stock here and we have a stop level here, that will be our minus one R. So as I mentioned that the stock went up, uh, we exited around 55. So it went up by a multiple of R 11 times, meaning that we made a profit of plus 11 R. We, ret we returned 11 times the amount of risk uh, that we took. So the R concept is useful for you to know whether you are profitable or you're not profitable and whether every time you take a risk, you're taking a risk that is more likely to be beneficial to you because you don't want to take risk for the sake of taking risk. And I'm saying this from a trading perspective for the people who classify themselves uh, as investors, this might uh, not apply to them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the people who are investors, they look at, uh, they want multi -backers. So for them, if they put a thousand rand in the stock and eventually they exit at a, a 10,000, for them, that's a, a multi-pack. From a risk management perspective, I'm looking at how much I'm going to lose on a specific stock. And then based on how much I have gained, then I calculate the R concept. So just uh, that's a, a bit of a recap there so that you are familiar with uh, the R concept. So yeah, those are the two scenarios. Scenario number one, the price come back, retest the 200 day moving average, it rejects uh, lower prices, I place a trade going up to getting 72 rand per share. Or the second scenario, the price just it doesn't uh, retest this uh, green line, it goes back and goes above uh, the 50 day moving average, which is somewhere near 60 rand per share. Then I place a trade there, again, targeting that uh, 72 rand per share. So that's how we play uh, Mesmat. And then uh, for the people in Houting, we saw that uh, Mabonya Mall was attacked a lot. Uh, we saw a gentleman that was dedicated in protecting uh, the mall. I guess we can say kudos to that uh, gentleman. There are people who make a decision however they feel about the situation, whether they feel like uh, attacking the shopping complexes or they feel like uh, protecting the complexes. It goes, it boils down to the individual's uh, decision. But uh, we saw that a gentleman that was willing to protect the shopping complex. I guess we can say that he did a great job. Uh, the country need uh, more people like him. We do not promote violence. We also do not promote uh, vigilantism. We just appreciate the work that was done by, by the gentleman. Okay. Uh, it defines the largest shareholder of Maponya Mall. So the mall, we don't know how long it will take uh, for the 
mall owners or developers to fix whatever that needs uh, to be fixed to get the mall function back again. But in terms of share price, which is the point of this uh, analysis, so we saw that a uh, redefine has been below the 200 day moving average. Then it started to consolidate on the sideways. Somewhere around just before December 2020, it attempted to come back and trade above the 200 day moving average, but it quickly failed. Then it came back to consolidate now again uh, below the 200 day moving average. Then somewhere around uh, February, it broke uh, above this level with a bit of volume there. Nothing hectic, it's not a lot of volume, but there was some volume supporting that move. So when that uh, happened, then we took a, a redefined position there uh, around February. So I've been holding a redefine. Uh, it's been a bit stressful because I'm still waiting for redefine to trade above this uh, level. So I think that's around uh, 450 per share. But still, uh, all I can say, it's just coming uh, here at this level. You can see it went up there around 450 per share. Then it came back to retest the 200 day moving average. Then it came back uh, around the 450 region. And then now it's consolid uh, consolidating tightly there. And then that uh, incident happened and then it broke lower, but it quickly found uh, support on the 200 day moving average. That is good. It means that um, the bullish sentiment is still holding there. The buyers are really taking advantage of these uh, lower prices whenever it bounces down. They just buy a bit more of the stock, pushing the price high. As you can see now, the price is still sandwiched uh, between the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. So if it comes back and close above this uh, level, the 50-day moving average, I anticipate that the price is going to continue to trade higher. So for the dividend lovers, earlier this year, Redefine made it clear that uh, in terms of they did the liquidity test, just to check if they have enough uh, cash that they can pass on to shareholders. So I guess they failed that uh, liquidity test because they released a statement uh, saying that they will not be paying a distribution. I've been holding this stock for, uh, I think, since the beginning of 2021, no dividend has reached uh, my brokerage account. So I guess JSE allowed them not uh, to, to pay that distribution. Remember, Redefine is a real estate investment trust. According to the regulations, they're obligated to pass at least, I think, 75% or 80% of the income that they get from the tenant. But then again, if the business is struggling, then I guess they, they can be lenient to them. So Redefine hasn't paid a dividend as yet, but the share price is still holding there. I'm still happy to hold uh, my shares on Redefine. So yeah, that uh, protest didn't affect. I mean, it was just a uh, Maponya Mall. There are other uh, property companies that own the companies, uh, the malls that were affected in KZN or the buildings that were affected in KZN. This one is just, uh, it happened in, in Gauteng. And then the last one that I want us to look at is this uh, giant shop right holding. We know that uh, this is uh, on paper, it's a good company. So after that uh, period of share price decline, going back as far as I can remember, the share price then around uh, August 2020, it attempted to trade above the 200 day moving average, but the first attempt uh, failed dismally there, as you can see, but then share price released uh, earnings around this date, as you can see. So I guess it was a positive figure because you see there's a lot of buyers now. And then that actually, the stock had a gap uh, up there, meaning that people really pushed uh, the price high. So it went up uh, testing about 150 rand per share. Then it started to consolidate back on the side, finding support on the 200 day moving average, and then trading all the way back up to 150 rand per share. Again, failing to break up this level, coming back, um, to retest the 200 day moving average. What you should note is that uh, this high is higher than this uh, high there. So as I've mentioned before, the characteristics of an uptrend is that it's a series of higher highs and higher lows. So I'm happy to see that this low was higher than that uh, previous low. 
and then the stock came back it broke above this level now forming a higher high which was higher than the previous high there so from there again it's just uh, keeps on going up and down as you can see and then with the protest when the protest uh, happened not much uh, action happened today as you see this the share price was somewhere around uh, 160 rand per share and then it came back a bit found support on the 50-day moving average and then it continued uh, to trade higher so the share price is currently there trading at around 157 rand per share so for me there is no need uh, to panic i see the support there the stock is finding support and uh, it's one of the few companies i mean this deal they did pay a dividend so it's only mismatch and redefined that have paid a dividend and then shoprite uh, has paid dividend the recent dividend was paid in april that was about a uh, one rand 91 cent per share but that's a, a gross then you have to subtract that at 20 percent that goes to sars so i think people got um close to about 160, 160 cent which would be uh, 160 per share so yeah it's one of the the few companies that is able to pay dividend uh, during this uh, COVID times we know that a lot of companies are struggling uh, they are retrenching people uh, i mean if people are retrenched they don't have an income there's not enough uh, money for people to buy food which is a challenge and then if people are not buying food it means that you can't expect the economy to function as we would like uh, it to see it function so yeah we will see how shoprite will continue to trade but the protest didn't affect um shoprite as well so by the look of things it's only mismatch that took a, a hit there but it's just a, a minor hit because as you can see the 200 day moving average is still facing up which is good uh, it means that the stock is still on a strong uptrend there so that is why i'm saying that uh in the near future i'll be looking to take back uh, this position so yeah that's it uh, for today we can see that uh, from a technical analysis perspective despite the bad news everything that is happening in the country if the move is there on the stock if the stock is already uh, on an uptrend it can continue to trade uh, to higher levels but it differs from company to company from a fundamental perspective people would also want to look at the balance sheet and all those kind of things and then to say the company has a strong balance sheet so it can weather the storm or maybe the company does not have a strong balance sheet so it's easy for that company to be severely affected but for the four companies that we looked at today Distel Group, uh, Mesmart, Redefine, and Shoprite, we can see that the share price is still uh, holding there. So it's not a buy or sell uh, signal. I'm simply saying that there's no need to panic. If you already own the stock, there's no need uh, to panic and to want uh, to sell. And if you want to buy the stock, we've already discussed how we can trade those uh, levels. Just go back to each and every stock analysis. So you can click there at the bottom we have a time frame for each and every stock if you're interested in this deal you can just look at this deal analysis if you want more smart you can look at more smart analysis and so on and then once again if you uh, enjoyed this uh, stock analysis please click the like button if you haven't subscribed uh, to the channel yet i would like to ask you that uh, you consider subscribing so that's the end of today's video. I will see you on the next uh, analysis.